right now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over Live. Pope Francis has met with his Council of Cardinals to discuss reforms at the Vatican. Papal comments on the old Latin mass of the, or the Roman Rite surfaced this week, as did an extraordinary papal video message to evangelical ministers. Here via satellite, to put it all in perspective, is Bishop Robert Morlino of Madison, Wisconsin. Your Excellency, thanks for being here. I'm very happy to be here, Raymond. Actually, <clears throat> thank you for coming to visit me in my office. That's right. You see, we, we, you don't even have to come to us. We come to you. Now, last week, Cardinal O'Malley was on the program, and he is the member or a member of the G8 Reform Council advising the Pope. And we asked him about the much-reported focus of this upcoming Synod on the Family. Now, reports keep returning to the talk of amending the Church's teaching on contraception or rethinking the way the Church reaches out to divorced and remarried Catholics. Now, this is Filipino Cardinal-designate Orlando Cuervado. He's at the Vatican. Listen to this. I want your reaction. They would expect some kind of uh, uh, stability in the same line of uh, doctrine that the church has had. Uh, it does not mean that they don't want any change, but they want to see some kind of a pastoral approach. Your Excellency, we keep hearing this mentioned, a pastoral approach, a pastoral response has been invoked so often over the last few days, especially concerning divorced and remarried Catholics and the contraceptive teaching. Do you see any changes coming in that regard? Not, not any substantial changes, Raymond. It's, it's becoming more and more clear to me as I try to learn more about Pope Francis and his background that uh, in Argentina, the bread and butter of everyday ministry of bishops and priests is the pastoral ministry, reaching out to those who are in need, uh, in a particular way, the poor, and addressing their needs because in Argentina, I gather that there isn't any daily representation of Catholics who reject the teaching of the church. Mm -hmm. And so I think when Pope Francis emphasizes the pastoral, he emphasizes that against the background of his experience in Argentina, mm -hmm. which is the best that any of us can do, yeah. is to talk from where we come from. The, what's really unfortunate about this situation of the use of the word pastoral is that usually people look upon this as, do I get to be pastoral or do I get to proclaim the truth? Mm. Is being pastoral being pastoral at the expense of the truth? Mm. And there are some people in the church who want it to be. They I'll, somehow, I don't know how, but they look upon the, tr the truth as secondary, and the truth then can be adjusted to help the individual be f in front of them right. feel better about things, feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. And we've always struggled with this. The, uh, Pope Benedict said so well, only what is true can ultimately be pastoral. Ah. Uh, our, our pastoral outreach is filled with love for the person and a respect that owes them the truth. And when couples are applying for a marriage annulment, for example, they have a right to the truth. We respect and love them by telling them the truth with love. Mm -hmm. And if the truth allows them to receive an annulment and receive a declaration of nullity and then enter into marriage, well then, good. Mm -hmm. If the truth says that their first marriage, their prior marriage, was indeed valid and therefore cannot be dissolved, mm -hmm. then we say we want to welcome you and help you to live with this cross. We want to, we want to help you carry the cross. Mm -hmm. But it can't become part of the pastoral ministry to help people avoid carrying a cross when the circumstances of their life lead them precisely there. Bishop, uh, the Pope renewed his Argentinian passport this week, even though he is automatically a Vatican citizen. Now, people are reading different things into mm -hmm. this. What do you read here very quickly? 
I read a very predictable response of a true Argentinian. Mm. The Argentinian people are different, to my, as I'm beginning to learn, from most of the rest of Latin America in several ways. But one of the most important ways is they have a profound culture and a profound educational background, and they are very passionately loyal to their country. Hmm. Now, and you think that's what this is an expression Fran of? Not, not, not in any way a rejection of his Vatican uh, citizenship or no, his I current think, position? I think, uh, you know, we say, they say in medicine that the common illnesses occur commonly. <laughs> in other words, look for the, the easiest explanation. Mm -hmm. And the easiest explanation to this, I think, is that a passionate Argent, as a passionate Argentinian, he simply wants to hold fast to that uh, to which his heart is loyal. And I think it's a very human, understandable phenomenon. And I think that reading too much into it mm -hmm. is a trap that the mass media continue to set Okay. For all of us. Well, we'll try not to fall into it. There, a remarkable papal message surfaced this week to Pentecostals. Uh, Bishop Tony Palmer, who's the ecumenical officer at the Communion of Evangelical Episcopal Churches, recorded this with his iPhone, and it was played at a Kenneth Copeland conference in Texas. It's extraordinary. Watch this clip. La grammatica semplice, due regole. Ama Dio soprattutto e ama l'altro perché il tuo fratello e la tua sorella. Oh, amava. Una lunga strada di peccato comunitario. Ma chi ha la colpa? Tutti abbiamo la colpa. Tutti siamo peccatori. Eh? Soltanto uno è il giusto, il Signore. E... Io ho la nostalgia e vi chiedo anche un favore di pregare per me perché ho bisogno delle vostre preghiere. Io prego per voi, eh? lo farò, <ride> ma io ho bisogno delle vostre preghiere e pregare al Signore perché ci unisca tutti. Bishop, have you ever seen anything like this? I mean, this was an impromptu message the Pope delivered to someone's iPhone. He, he asks for unity. He says, please pray for me. What, what's the effect of this? And have you ever seen anything like it? Well, <clears throat> I guess I've never seen anything like it from a Pope. But uh, that is not uh, in any sense by itself to make, to make a negative pronouncement about anything. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to see anything when that uh, clip was being played and heard, and I, I picked up bits and pieces from Francis in the Italian because he speaks softly. Right. But he seems to be saying we're all equally to blame, mm -hmm. and uh, let's therefore move forward and unite. Yeah. Is that the general gist that's of it? That's it. No, that's what he said. And he said, we all bear, we all have sins and in history we've all committed them. And, you know, let's let God complete this miracle of unity that he's begun. Glory to the Father. Well, again, see, what he's doing is he's exercising his pastoral uh, ministry of being the source and summit of unity. And so yeah, he immediately, as I think I've even said before with you, Raymond, he yeah. is focusing completely on the idea because that I Jesus will draw us together. Yeah, Let's yeah. keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. We're all sinners, I, and Jesus mm -hmm. will draw mm -hmm. us together. He doesn't think, he's not instinctively drawn to talk about doctrinal issues or doctrinal clarity mm -hmm. <clears throat> or doctrinal differences. What he wants to do is take people where they are All right, again, it's and a pastoral draw them approach. a step closer. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that is always his default, because as I said again, uh, it's he's he wasn't faced in his background with daily challenges to doctrine and clarity of doctrine. When he says, <clears throat> "I'm a son of the church," he really means it. But I think he dealt with people who were sons and daughters of the church and who had other real pastoral needs. Whereas here in the United States, one of the deepest pastoral needs is the, the pastoral need for the truth, 
about faith and the truth about morals. Your Excellency, and I that's have something that I'm, a bishop here confronts every day. I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. I only have 30 seconds. A Czech Archbishop, Jan Graubner, claims that while speaking to the Pope, he made some negative comments about the extraordinary form of the Mass or the Latin Mass. And according to a website who cre that credits Vatican Radio, the Pope said he could not understand why a younger generation wished to return to the old rite. And the Archbishop quotes the Pope, and he says, I find that it's rather a kind of a fad. And since it's a kind of fad, it doesn't need that much attention. Your reaction to this, some are saying this is a sign that the Pope really doesn't care for the Latin Rite, and he's very dismissive of those who pursue it. Well, interestingly enough, Raymond, um, Archbishop Roach in the uh, Congregation for Divine Worship uh, said recently that the Pope has never said anything to him about the ordinary form or the extraordinary form, mm -hmm. one way or the other. And I would just say for myself, if I was in with the bishop at a Ad Lamina visit, um, and the, I had a moment to speak to the Pope privately, or even what we talked about publicly, I would never approach the press no, it's a bad further idea. to discuss it Very myself. Good. Bishop, Bishop Robert Morlino, as always, thank you so much for your insights. We've got to run. We're hitting a hard break here. But we will talk to you again soon, hopefully in Rome.